All right, guys, next example, we've got a Y secondary feeding a Y resistive load. So again, this is the primary. No idea what the primary is that's feeding this. Uh, but our secondary looks like it has a voltage of 28 that's given. And what do we know about the resistive load? Well, we know that each of these guys is 20 ohms. So we're still doing balanced circuits here. So we've got 28 volts, and it looks like it's from this terminal right here to this terminal right here. From So from the previous videos, we've seen that that's the external voltage, or that is our line voltage. So our line voltage is 208 volts. Okay, I'm doing my videos from Canada, so uh, our distribution systems are quite often a 128 volt supply. Other places like the States, you may have a 277, 480 volt supply. Others, you may have 347, 600. In this case, we've got a 208 volt as our line voltage. So that means that the voltage from here to here is 208 volts. That's our line voltage. Okay, that voltage comes across and we can see that it's impressed across this point and this point of our Y resistive load. So that 208 volts line is feeding our Y resistive load, but that voltage is across two resistors. So there's no way that this voltage right here is going to be 208 volts. So we're going to write down our rules for the Y circuits. Remember that uh, for a Y circuit, we have our V line is equal to V phase times root 3. And we know that the line current is equal to the phase current. That will be, these guys will be a mirror image of each other again because we have a Y source and a Y load. Okay, so uh, what do we need to do next? We need to find our phase voltage, where our phase voltage will be our line voltage divided by root 3. Okay, so we've got 208 volts divided by root 3, and we know that that's going to give us 120 volts. Okay, just to confirm, we have 208 volts. We're going to divide by the square root of 3. And that gives us 120 volts. Beautiful. Okay, so that voltage that we just found is our phase voltage. So that means that this voltage right across here is 120 volts on the phase. Okay, this voltage right here is 120 volts, and this voltage is 120 volts. Any, from any line to neutral connection there, we have 120 volts. We don't need a neutral load because we have a balanced load. No need for a neutral to go back. Neutral only kind of carries the unbalanced loads. Okay, these are a mirror image of each other, so we know that this voltage here is 120 volts on the phase as well. And we can drop that guy in here across that winding. Okay, our next step is to find the phase current. So we're just going to break this down into, again, an Ohm's Law calculation here. So on the phase here, we have 120 volts that's impressed across, what, 20 ohms. And obviously, I mean, we don't need a calculator for this, right? But we'll just do it anyways. 120 divided by our 20 gives us 6 amps on the phase. Beautiful. Okay, so that gives us 6 amps, and that current is right there. Okay, so again, for our phase current, we've said 120 volts on the phase, divided by our 20 ohms on the phase, and that gave us a current of 6 amps on the phase. It also gives us our line current. We can see here that our line current is equal to our phase current. There's only one path for that current to flow from the source into that Y load there. So this current on the outside is also going to be 6 amps. Beautiful. That is our line current. So I line is equal to I phase is equal to 6 amps on the line. That current is coming from this source right here, right? So that current is also here. And we know that there's only one path for that current to flow. So that current is also here on the phase. Okay, these guys are mirror images of each other. 208 volts on the line, 120 volts on the phase, and we have 6 amps on the line and 6 amps on the phase. Sweet. Now all we need to do is find our power values. So with those guys, our equations, there's two equations we can use. We can use V, v line times I line 
times root 3, or we can use, easy now, or we can use uh, v phase times i phase, and if we're using our single phase values, we're going to multiply it by the three single phase windings. Okay, one or the other equation should give us basically identical values. So for this guy right here, we have a line voltage of 208 volts on the line. We're going to multiply that by our line current of 6 amps on the line. And we're going to multiply that by root 3. Okay, so we got 208. Uh, we're going to multiply that by 6. And then we're going to multiply by the square root of 3. I got 2161.6 VA, or wattage here, 2161.6. And that's in watts, right? Because these guys are just resistors so far. Okay, now let's take a look at this equation here and see if we get an almost identical value. We have, what, 120 volts on the phase. Our phase current is 6 amps. And we're going to multiply that by 3. Okay, so we'll move that guy over here. So we've got 120 times our 6 amps times 3 gives us 2160. Gorgeous. Okay, these guys are essentially the same value. Okay, again, this was 120 point something, right? So in just those small nuances, we're going to have different values when we look at our power values. But essentially, you can use one equation or the other. I tend to stick with this one, V line times I line times root 3, because that's what works for me. And later on, when we get into three phase, we're going to be looking at the line currents. Beautiful. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.